Hello, it's Wednesday, it's eight o'clock and it's George Raw on Raw Raw. It's great to be here. Um, I've been reliably informed that we are best off to just allow everybody to come for a minute or two rather than just jumping in. Greater minds than mine have said a little bit of an intro is a good idea. So I'm going to just sit and say hello to Pam Thornton. She's the first here that I can see this evening. Um, so great, Pam, it's great to see you. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing this evening, okay? Um, should I do? No, I'll let, I'll let a few more people come and join in. Karen Reed is here. Hello, Karen with Newton. Very good, nice to see you. Dermot Leeson is there. Dermot, where are you from? You sound Irish, but you may be you may be more English than me. You may be from uh, <laughs> I don't know, Indonesia for all I know. <laughs> great to see you. Lindy Mandiris. Hello, Lindy. It's great to see you. Uh, Jenny Hughes is here. Great. And Janet Brown and Nikki Grant and Nicola Cresswell. And Emma is here. Oop. She's going to ask me loads of difficult questions. She said she's going <laughs> to pop loads and loads of questions on. Adriana is here and Dermot. Dermot says he's, he's in Daventry, not in deepest, darkest uh, Ireland. I'm half Irish, okay, so I'm I'm with you all the way. I, we used to go to Ireland for summer holidays uh, every summer to see the grandparents, so uh, my heart is is there, partially at least. Fantastic. Michelle Elliott is in Derbyshire. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Julie Madgwick is is all the way in West Sussex. I know that part of the world very well, Julie. And uh, Jane's in Newport. Good, good, good. Right, guys, um, a lovely crowd of you. Um, Emma Rutherford said, which half is Irish? Well, obviously the top half. <laughs> Very good, very good. Uh, Karen, Karen says, Newton says, hello, Uncle Nick. Good to see you. Uh, uh, I hope they're looking after you, Newton. Okay, guys. So um, I've, look, I've, I've even done a script. Yeah, yeah I, I, was, I was just um, having a chat with um, Emma, who, who said, said congratulations because we, we're about a year old. Can't remember when we first started, but it was about now. It was about March, April time. Because I just thought, oh my God, the this lockdown business is going to be diabolical, and people are going to be going crazy. So I thought, well, good excuse to just chat about raw food. God, look, 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 look forward to something each week. And so there you go. So we're about a year old, and um, we're, we're we're coming on, and it's it's been an interesting year. We've seen we talked to lots of people. Um. Oh yeah, uh, raw pet medics has been as kind of an offshoot of this because of my familiarity with the with the medium. Um, I've, we, we're doing now doing raw pet medics. Connor Brady and Brendan Clark and I on a Friday night at seven pm uh, from the raw pet medics Facebook page. If you like this, you'll probably like that. It's very similar. It's quite a little, a little bit you know laid back, but there's some serious stuff um, running through it and on raw pet medics we um this week what are we doing we're doing balance we're going to just talk about the principles of raw food and balance and we're going to compare that with the complete and balanced diet we're going to think about kibble connor's got a few amazing papers up his sleeve uh brendan's going to be talking about some of the mm, the basic uh premises behind balance and i'm going to be talking about the, some of the practicalities i've got one or two nice papers as well which i'm going to share so it's 45 minutes it's brat tat really lots of lots of great information bit of banter between the three of us um and uh if you like i say if you like this you'll like that okay what was i going to say so the first thing on on the script is that I've just discovered the most amazing book in its, it's, is it to do with raw food? It kind of is, kind of is. It's to do with everything, essentially. Now, 
don't be scared because it looks really imposing. And when I first saw it, I, I thought, my goodness, that is not my cup of tea. Okay. I'm doing it on the good old, uh, what's it called? Audible. Because I haven't got time to read. It means that I can catch up with the book in the car, and you know, while I'm washing up, while I'm cutting the grass, whatever it is. I've been reading it for about four days now, and I'm about a third of the way through it. It's it's 27 hours long on audio book, which is kind of long, and it's talking about um, mankind's separation from the real natural world and how that is behind our or yeah the modern man's state of anxiety and fear and reflecting on this i i, I it and it really is one of the most most remarkable books i've ever read and i've only got a third of the way through it um eisenstein is he's one of these guys who who knows everything about everything and he can put it all down beautifully he writes amazingly so if you're the slightest bit interested in this stuff then it really is worth it as i was saying it's through man's separation from reality you know the real world and how that that imbues us with anxiety and i i was just reflecting on that i was thinking and i said to ellie the other day i think I've been anxious since the day I started, more or less, only at a very low level at that stage, uh, at vet college, and definitely from when I started being a vet. Just wanting to do a right with a good job, wanting to stay ahead, um, uh, anxious because I, ever since the first three years of two, three years of, of, of being in practice, I've always been leading a, a, a path of my own you know with the homeopathy and the acupuncture and then the nutrition and nutrition's really taken over so massively and with herbs always been slightly on the fringes and therefore that's you know you're always wait, waiting for somebody to take a pot shot at you i think that leads to anxiety and just reading this book has really helped i feel um i feel feel a lot better i think you know it's not kind of a self-help book. It's just kind of putting everything in context. And when you can realize that we're all born with a certain degree of anxiety, survival anxiety and, and what have you, then it, it kind of kind of makes sense. So there you go. It's just a tiny little tip. Um, I'll show you again just so you can see it if you didn't get it the first time. Charles Eisenstein, wonderful guy, family man. Brain the size of a planet. It's called the ascent of humanity. Okay, amazing. If it's not your cup of tea, that's absolutely fine. But if it is, I think it's one of the most remarkable books I've read in my fifty-three years. There you go. Okay, let's get on with a bit of raw food, shall we? So, first of all, I'd love to ask you. Uh, I would love to ask you five questions okay i'd like to ask you five questions are you ready <laughs> sasha says dr t's book club yeah well, you gotta do something during lockdown haven't you okay so here's my five questions to you okay and you can you can please do um jump in uh jump in and uh, uh, uh and let me know what you think so the first question is this uh, this I think I've said I said it a long time ago, but has anyone got access to one dog who's on raw and one dog who's on kibble so that we can get two stools side by side in the garden and just leave them there? Obviously, you don't want to put them anywhere where anyone's going to trip in them side by side. And then just once every three days or every seven days, depending on how quickly they're degrading, just to take a little photo and post post that up um somewhere or send them to me and i'll post them up okay i think it'd be great because i think raw poos will degrade a lot quicker and therefore be more bio, be, be more ecologically friendly than the the uh, kibble poo which i think is pr because of many reasons is going to be there for a lot longer I don't know, but I just like to do that little experiment. So if anybody's up for that, that would be really brilliant. Okay, next question. 
What irritates you most about fervent dry food enthusiasts? Fervent, uh, I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me about raw food. Dry food is the only way to feed dogs. Enthusiasts, what irritates you about those people? Just, just I know, yeah, I know you. You'll, um, you'll, you'll, you'll have fun with that one. I listen to Lisa Tarbuck on Radio Two on a Saturday night at six o'clock for two hours, and I got this idea from her. She always asks her her loyal followers to to uh she, she, she'll, she'll she'll read out a load of questions and say please send me in your some 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 uh, stories about such and such and such and such it's hilarious it's brilliant and the music is very very good as well so just a little word to the wise okay so um has anyone got a raw fed dog and a, and a dry fed dog and the second one was what irritates you about the dry enthusiasts the third question is do you like Q&As? Because if you do, we can do more. If you don't, then we'll do something else. OK. Um, uh, and while we're doing here, doing um, uh, asking you questions, uh, what's the best time of day for George Orr? Is 8 p.m. the best time of day? Uh, let me know, because we can always tweak the uh, the timings. Yeah? Let's make it good for you. you know, I have to drive out to the office. I'm in the office. So it's kind of the same for me, whichever way it goes. Um, and who would you like to see on the show? I definitely did ask this at the beginning of uh, George Orwell when we first started. And um, I got some fantastic responses. So thank you very much for that. But we're a year down the line. And I think I've, I've, I've taken many people off that list. So anybody you fancy seeing, then let me know. There you go. Um, if you missed the list of questions that I've just asked you, you can always get it on repeat, okay, because uh, this is being recorded as we speak to the Holistic Vet Limited page. It will be recorded there and also to Dr. Nick Thompson on the YouTube, okay? So see what you think. See what you think, okay? Great. Let's get into some questions. Okay, Susie Bell says, love it, Q&A at 8 p.m. is good. Okay, good, 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 good. I will have a look. I don't, usually don't because well, usually by the, by the end of the show, I'm on my last legs. But I will have a look at these and, and um, gather some information for the next you know, few months. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Coco Susna says, uh, <laughs> her pet peeve is prescription diets, which aren't even prescription because you can buy them on the internet. OK. Um, uh, OK, uh, Rebecca O'Leary, not asking too much. She says, love to see Ka Karen Becker. I'll try. Yeah, <laughs> I will. I will email her. Um, I, I, I speak to her every now and again and I will ask her. Sasha says 7 p.m. Uh, hang on, I've lost it. Uh, hang on. Sasha, what did you say? 7 p.m. because I'd like to know you're having tea at a good time. I ate my tea at six o'clock, actually, but that's very kind of you to think of my digestive health, Sasha Elias. Brilliant. Um, la, 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 la. Right, let's have a look. Questions? Oh, no, I'm going to... Okay, so Lindy says, I just cannot get uh, Ralph to eat any bones, necks, ribs, etc. And now we won't touch any chews, yaks, trees, trachea, or anything like that. What can I do to keep his teeth clean? Okay, Lindy, that's, I'm going to answer that part and then move on to another. I'll put the question up there for you, for you guys. Okay, so, so Ralph, who I know... Uh, he doesn't want to eat anything because he's a minx, basically. And so we need to keep his teeth clean and he does need bony material. So I would suggest, Lindy, that we make sure that all any minces he gets have bone in them because bone does a number of things. But uh, so if you chew bones, it cleans your teeth. Obviously, we can't do that with Ralph. So... 
basically the bone that he's going to take in is going to do two main things one is going to fill out the stool and help with stool quality which is really really important and the other thing is it also excoriates the inside of your gut you know how you can excoriate your skin and, and, and exfoliate your skin and what have you bones do that as they go down the guts because they, they're slightly rough and they just they clean up the uh, inside surface of the gut which is really 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 healthy helps with turnover of the enterocytes and things like that uh so uh bone does so bone stool excoriates or exfoliates and it's nutrition it's full of um, you know uh, calcium and phosphorus and magnesium and all those things okay so that's what that's what so that's really important that he has those okay going back to the teeth which is the main drive of your question Lindy uh we're gonna have to do other things uh I'm not a fan of brushing teeth generally but if he's very amenable to tooth brushing and you are able to brush uh, the inside as well as the outside yeah when you Lindy and everybody brush your teeth you brush the inside and the outside yeah teeth have got three surfaces they've got a top they've got an inside and they've got an outside and if you don't do one of those surfaces then you're not doing a very good job and you're going to run into problems so Lindy if you're able to brush his teeth you're going to say to me what toothpaste should I use I don't really like the, uh, the the doggy toothpaste. I would be inclined to use um, something like we use. Uh, uh, is it Uncle Tom's? Uncle Tom's fennel toothpaste. I would get some of that and 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 use that to to uh, um, help with teeth. I would also use some of Connor's Canny Dent. Canny Dent. C A N I D E N T. It's a seaweed mix which helps to soften the tartar. And I would also be taking him along to a nice vet who can gently crack off tartar on his teeth uh, every six months or so. And if you do that, that might keep him away from having a dental, which would be kind of nice. How about that? That's quite a comprehensive. Whether it works or not is another matter, but there's there's something to to to... To look at i shouldn't jump about as much because the machine can't lose his focus with me i apologize here we go i'm going if i do that and then that it'll find me again okay great okay uh let's have a look some quick my dog has seizures uh every five oh this is Maisie here saying my dog has seizures every uh, five to six weeks. I think that means every five to six weeks. Okay, Maisie, sorry to hear that. I would suggest in that scenario, from a nutritional point of view, obviously you go to your vets and they will look after you. And if he needs phenobarbitone or uh, uh, a Keppra or whatever it is, then that's what he needs. However, there, from a nutritional point of view, we could talk about herbs, we could talk about homeopathy, we could talk about all sorts of things. I'm just going to talk about herbs, about food. Okay, so... MCT, yes, very much so. Uh, CBD oil, uh, yes, very much so. Well done. That's really, really good. Um, that is a good idea. Also, uh, uh, have a look at ke the Keto Pet Sanctuary. Keto Pet Sanctuary. Uh, you find him online, and I would get him onto a ketogenic diet, okay, which is essentially very low carb, uh um and it's kind of moderate fat moderate protein type uh diet in order to stop the body using carbs for fuel so that the body uses ketones ketone bodies for fuel and the reason that i say that is that keto uh, uh, um ketogenic diets are used in in children i mean we think we have a problem with five or six weeks and five or six weeks is a problem uh Maisie, definitely is but in some children have kind of 40 fits a day all right and when they when they get to that kind of stage and and the drugs are not helping ketogenic diets can okay so there you go ketogenic diet uh, as well as the mct and the cbd is a good idea uh, if it was me i'd go and see my local herb vet 
and I would go and see my local homeopathic vet. We've had some good results using homeopathy with fits. Okay, great stuff. Okay, there we go. I'm going to move on. Um, that was Maisie. Uh, so, um, good. thank you, Alice Rosano, for your comment on chicken and rice. This is very good. I agree. Um, okay, here's a question from Nikki Carmo. Hi, Nikki. Um, uh, what does that say? Take time to make your soul happy. Oh, brilliant. Uh, you would probably like the uh, Charles Eisenstein book if that's your take on things. It's a very happy, positive book. It's really lovely. Um, so your question is, if switching an adult dog over to raw, how would you recommend it is done? Okay, good. Let's have just a couple of minutes on, on transitions, just looking at the time. Yeah, I've got plenty of time. So transitions, there's there's a few ways of doing it. And, and actually, uh, if you look back on Holistic Bet Limited, down way below here, when I spoke to, uh, let's have a look. Um, have a look. Uh, I've spoken to somebody. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, she'll kill me because I've forgotten her name. Uh, she's got glasses. She's a hairdresser. She is in uh, Newcastle. And in the spur of the moment, I can't remember her name. Anyway, if you, if you look down, for me, speaking to a lovely lady with, with uh, amazing glasses on that's how you'll see the one we discussed transitions but what we discussed was most dogs especially if they're fit and healthy and well you can just do a straight transition so on a monday they're on hills and on a tuesday and the rest of their life they're on a good balanced raw diet okay or purina or raw canin yeah and then swap over okay you can most dogs will do that like eight out of ten will do that some dogs need a little bit of transitioning or if you're transitioning when you're you know, on raw and you're doing some food trials, I've just developed a, a thought which is called exponential transitioning, which means, uh, you, so uh, let's say uh, you want to transition from turkey onto venison. What you'll do is you're feeding turkey. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll have on the first meal, you'll give one teaspoon of the new venison meal yeah, obviously. On the second, you'll give two, but on the third meal, you'll give four, and then you'll go eight, and then you go 16, until you rapidly transition onto the new food. So this is a lot faster than doing 5%, 10%, 15%, 15%, etc. I think that's, that's probably taking too long. Um, and it also means that you come in at a much smaller volume of the new food. So if the dog is going to react, say that this the dog that was 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 going from turkey to venison, if he was going to react to venison, it's a lot easier to to row back from one teaspoon of venison than it is from an entire meal because you've done it to giving them too much. Okay, so exponential. You go one, two, four, eight, sixteen, no, like that. OK, or the very, really simple way of doing it is you do uh, um, you'll do a quarter of the new food, then you'll do half the new food and then you do three quarters and then you do completely over to the new food and you'll wean off the old food and up onto the new food over about four days. How about that? There you go. So that's how I do the transition. I tend to avoid uh, beef and chicken when I'm transitioning dogs onto raw initially. Yeah, many dogs are fine on beef and chicken, but if you've got a dog who's got the slightest tendency to having food sensitivities, then uh, then uh, I think that uh, avoiding beef and chicken is just puts uh, stacks the cards in your favour just a little bit. Right, I'm just gonna have a little drink. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So that's you, Nikki. Great stuff. Okay. Uh, Nicola Creswell says about um, what irritates her it's the fact they say oh it's convenient <laughs> very good 
Uh, I'll show you. Here you go. That's Nikki Creswell. Da, da, da. Thank you, Nicola Creswell. Brilliant. Um, Barbara Royal. That's a great idea. Janet Nixon says, why don't we get Barb Royal? She's a laugh and a half. I love her. Um, yeah, I'll ask her as well. Yeah, fab. Thank you. And then Pam Thornton. Uh, let's have a look. What is a holistic approach to master cell tumors, diet and supplements only or combined with surgery, chemo, etc.? Depends on the situation. It depends on, on how metastatic the mast cell tumors are uh, and how many you've got. Or if you've, you know, you've taken four off the dog and a fifth one has appeared, you may not want to take that off again. OK, so um, so that so the, the, the surgery and the chemo, that's really depends on 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 the dog, on you on your vet and, and, and what have you. However, let's just look at um, diet and supplements. So diet, ketogenic diet for all cancers, I think is a great idea. Uh, it's easy to do and I think it's a, it, it, it's really powerful. Um, in terms of what kind of supplements, I use um, um, a medicinal mushroom. It's a five mushroom complex. Um, and I use that in combination with CBD and I use CV247. And those are the supplements that I generally use. Um, homeopathics, I uh, took a mast cell tumor off a staffy or, or somebody at the London practice, the Hyde Park Veterinary Center back in the day, 25 or so years ago, took one off and we sent it off to a homeopathic pharmacy and got it, got it made up into a remedy of canine mast cell tumor and i give that with every one of my mast cell uh tumors and to date and this is this is tempting fate but to date we've 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 been pretty successful obviously the earlier you get them the better but generally speaking i think we we do pretty well with uh, mast cell tumors i'm not making claims i'm just looking looking back retrospectively and 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 giving you just my thoughts of the moment nobody can nobody should be making claims on those kind of things okay um here we go uh ed ed billick is saying what to feed an eight week old rotty pup coming home may the 4th okay um the answer is whatever you fancy really you know in nature there's no such thing as puppy food so, so some some of the uh, uh raw food companies will do puppy food and great if you want to go for that that's really really good but um you know basically we, we feed mouse mouse is now how old she's about 19 weeks now and bluebell is just over two and they get fed exactly the same thing yeah um and what I would suggest, and I would suggest this for all dogs, to be quite honest, I would suggest you feed the same thing, as long as the dog is tolerating it, the same thing for about a week, and then you go to a second thing for about a week, and then you go to the third protein for about a week, and then you go to a fourth protein for about a week, and then if you've only got four handy, then you go back to your first one for a week. Because when you're, when you're off the first protein, it's got three weeks until the body sees it again. And it also means that if the puppy has a minor intolerance, a minor sensitivity to one of those foods, it's really obvious because it'll be fine for the first week, fine for the second week. And if it's intolerant of the third protein, it'd be a little bit squitty or a little bit gurgly uh, in that third week. So it, you're kind of helping to, to work out what foods really, really work um and i think that's a really good idea because if you think about it in the old days dogs would eat the same type of protein for a whole season you know in spring they'd eat rabbits and then in summer they would eat pretty much a bit of everything in winter interestingly did you see that the, there was that documentary about the the wolves of yellowstone and in the winter because they're so much better on on snow they've got big wide pads and they weigh less than elk and moose and things like this, they are much 
better able to hunt big game in the winter, which is not what you think, but there you go. Um, and so in the winter, they may be on big game, for example, if it's a, a snowy environment. So I think stretching out the periods of exactly the same food for a more extended period is a really good idea. Okay, there you go. So there's there's two questions answered all in all in one go, Ed. And uh, good for you. Um, hope all goes well. Um, and well done you for thinking of feeding raw. Brilliant move. You won't regret it. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. Alice says to. Um, who would like to see uh, Thomas Sandberg? Actually, good news. If you look down below here, Alice, you will see not one but two interviews with Thomas. He came on hmm, when about May ish time and then kind of maybe July time. He came on twice. Very interesting guy. He's doing a lot of really, really, really good stuff. So just check back uh, below here for Thomas Sandberg and he's there. We had some good chats. Um, here we go. This is Zoe. What are you saying, Zoe? Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Um, I don't have any dry food enthusiasts to roll my eyes at, but so many with my breed have intolerance issues, and it's grain. Oh, and they always go for grain-free kibble or apquil. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's have a look. Uh, Karen Reed is obviously a big Connor fan. <laughs> uh, she says, "Get Connor on." Well, you'll be pleased to hear he's been on twice. Uh, again, he's been on twice. He came on initially um, April May time, and then again he came on just before Christmas to talk about the book, his book, uh, which is called Raw Feeding. Okay, great book. I'll show you it. That's the book. I think you probably all know it by now, but it's a, it's a great book, definitely. Um, okay, where were we? Where were we? Uh, okay, well, we're at uh, eight thirty-four. So um, I'm going to make this my last question, but. Um, so Nikki says her girls, what are, what breed are they? I can't quite make out. Black and tan, big black and tan girls by the look of it. Um, so eating soil. Now, why do dogs eat soil? There's a few reasons. And, and you have to just uh, try all of these uh, to to work out what's what. So. Some dogs will eat soil because they're just looking for kind of some kind of heavy bulk in their in their in their food, and therefore you might want to uh, increase the bone content to kind of emulate that bulky uh, bulky element. Some dogs will eat soil because they 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 tr they are subconsciously or their microbiome is trying to balance itself okay in which case look at probiotics we use phytospore is a lovely probiotic that's the one we use here phytospore f-i-d-o-s-p-o-r-e terrible name very nice product that's a probiotic effect um some dogs will eat it because they want the minerals and therefore uh, one would supplement with some more minerals um for example, Connor does a nice product that we do here as well called BioFunction 8. Um, also, Healthy Hounds do a very nice um, herb mix. And the reason I like um, um, the reason I like uh, um, Healthy Hounds is that they they have four formulae and they alternate them each 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 season. They change the formula. Uh, for their for their um, herb mix, and that's um, I think is is a brilliant thing to do because it emulates that that changing of the seasons, changing of prey, changing of 
snacking on herbs and grasses and things like that. So those for me would be the main reasons and and what you do to investigate would be to make those changes the probiotic or the bone or the uh, minerals and you would make those changes for at least a month perhaps even two months with each change in order to allow those those that, those those changes to really sink in if after you had done that so you're six months down the line say when you've done these three changes and they're still doing it then i wouldn't really worry too much because you've tried all the major major readers that they might do it i would just continue to do worm counts on them because they might pick up parasites from the soil um, i sometimes use soil in in, in in therapeutics some itchy dogs will benefit from having soil in their food believe it or not seriously some dogs I, I will use it as a probiotic but what i will do is i'll get people to go out to find to find some really clean organic old pasture soil um if your garden's never been touched with with with, with um pesticide or herbicide or anything like that you can perhaps use you know, um, part of your your the soil in the garden don't take the, the surface layer because cats may have pooed in it and you would put that into a sandwich box and put it in the fridge for a week say why do we do that nick the answer is because we want to kill the parasites if there are any part uh, parasites worm larvae things like that in the soil we will kill those off but the bacteria the viruses and the fungi and all that goodness will not be killed by the freezing process. It's the same as what we do with meat. Yeah, all meat before it goes in your dog must go in the freezer for at least a week for the same reason. Yeah, dogs do not get parasites from raw meat, contrary to uneducated popular opinion. Okay, they don't get parasites from raw meat that has been frozen it loses very little of its goodness and it all at once it's parasite free and it's campylobacter free so there we go um i can't believe it <laughs> 39 minutes down um uh uh well i don't know about you but i've really enjoyed it I've really, really enjoyed it. It's great to see you. Thank you for 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 all your 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 support and your uh, just goodness, really. Whoops, wobbly camera. Um, thank you very much. If you like Q and A's, we can do them more frequently. Okay, and uh, and therefore, if you've got any questions that don't get answered, then they they. Uh, you can answer them again and eventually we will get through those okay i hope it's been useful uh, uh having other people ask questions uh, even if your question didn't get answered um as i say if any problems um uh no if you, you've got a burning question then we will get to it eventually i'm sure okay um do 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 uh, what else was I going to say? Remember RPM, Raw Pet Medics, seven o'clock on Friday. Should be fun. It's all about balance. Yes, balance, 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 balance. Um, and next week, next week, next week, next week, I don't know what we're doing. Watch this space and I'll see what we can find. Um, if anybody can do the two poos side by side, uh, the dry, the the the, uh, the kibble poo versus the raw poo side by side, or if a number of us could do it, because then we've repeated the experiment a number of times, that would be really fantastic. And I think that would be a be a hoot to do, and it might prove a point. Who knows? Don't know at all. Um, please, uh, thank you, Dermot. Appreciate that. Um, 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 you know, if you like Q and A's that much, we can do them frequently i'll have a look through i don't normally look through but i will have a look through and i'll just see what the trend of opinion is how about that um i'm gonna go now thank you thank you thank you um uh be well eat well um enjoy your dogs 
Uh, we're almost out of lockdown. Please, God, it is the end of all lockdowns. Um, keep, keep, keep well in yourself. Um, and thank you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> thank you very much. See you later.